All right, everybody, welcome back. So now we'll talk about a different method by which we can solve systems of linear equations in two variables. This one is called addition. So the idea here is that if you have a solution that is a solution of both of your equations at the same time, then it will also persist at being a solution to the equation that you get when you add the two equations you have together. And sometimes you can use that in a clever way to solve for one of the variables right off. And then that gives you that there is a point of intersection between the two lines in question. And so then to find the other coordinate, all you need to do is plug the one that you solve for into either one of the previous equations. So for instance, we have this system 3x plus 7y equals to minus 1 and minus 3x plus 4y equals to minus 10. So if there is a pair x comma y that satisfies both of these equations at once, it will certainly also satisfy the equation that we get when we add the left side of this one together and the right side of these ones together and make a new equation. So when we do that, notice that 3x and minus 3x cancel each other out, and 7y and 4y go together to give just 11y. And on the right side, we get minus 1 plus minus 10 equals to minus 11. OK. This is very nice. Now I can divide both sides by 11 and get right off the bat that y equals to minus 1. So there is a point of intersection between these two lines, and it occurs at height y equals to minus 1. So in order to find the corresponding x value, I just need to plug in minus 1 into either one of these equations. So I chose to plug it into the first one here. Um, so what do we get? 3 times x plus 7 times minus 1 equals to minus 1. That gives me 3x minus 7 is minus 1. So 3x equals to 6, and thus x equals to 2. And if you're worried about, um, if you're worried about whether or not you plug it into the first one or the second one, let's just go ahead and like, maybe ease your fears here. So if we plug y equals minus 1 into the second equation, what do we get? Uh, minus 3x plus 4 times minus 1 equals 2 minus 10, right? And so this gives us minus 3x minus 4 equals 2 minus 10, which says then we can add 4 to both sides and we get minus 3x equals 2 minus 6, and oh, x still equals 2, 2. So it really does not matter. Um, Go ahead and pick your favorite of the two to plug back into that you like. OK. So here our solution is x equals to 2 and y equals to minus 1. Now, not every system is you know, given to you in a way that addition is really nice. Um, same with substitution, really. So you just kind of have to watch out and maybe exploit anything nice that you like. So this next system of equations doesn't seem like it's really good for either method. So we don't have just like x equals something or just y equals something. So substitution seems like it could be awkward. But we also don't really have um, two variables with a coefficients that are sort of opposite opposites. Yeah. So addition also seems like it could be awkward. We have 14x equals to 7y plus 6 and 3x plus 5y equals to 5. To be honest, we have something extra awkward here. I'd like to put 7y back over on the other side to kind of keep this uniform the way that we've been doing it. So we'll really first rewrite this as 14x minus 7y equals to 6, and 3x plus 5y equals to 5. Now, notice that I have at least y has that its coefficient on the first equation is negative and its coefficient on the second equation is positive. So what I might do is multiply both equations by some number. If you multiply a whole equation by a number, 
both sides of it, you don't change that equation, or at least a non-zero number that you multiply by. So if I do that in a clever way, I can ultimately make the y coefficients to be the same number but opposite sign. So if I multiply the first equation by 5 and the second equation by 7, then um, I'll get minus 35 as the coefficient for y in the first equation and plus 35 as the coefficient for y in the second equation. What you'll end up with is the first equation becomes 70x minus 35y equals to 30, and the second equation becomes 21x plus 35y equals to 35. And now you can do addition the regular way. If I add these two equations together, the y stuff will cancel, and I'll be left with 91x equals to 65. So then x equals to 65 over 91, which in case you were wondering, simplifies to 5 over 7. So now that I've got that, I can plug x equals to 5 over 7 into either equation. So I'll plug it into uh, the second one there because it doesn't have any minus signs and I'm sick of those right now. So we have 3 times 5 over 7 plus 5 times y equals to 5. This gives us 15 over 7 plus 5y equals to 5. And so 5y equals to 5 minus 15 over 7. Well, let's write everything over 7. So 5 becomes 35 over 7. And we have 35 over 7 minus 15 over 7 is 20 over 7. So then uh, we'll have 5y equals to 20 over 7. If we divide both sides by 5, that means we divide the 20 by 5, and we're left with y equals to 4 over 7. So our solution there is x is 5 over 7 and y is 4 over 7. Okay, the next two examples are going to be sort of the oddball ones that describe the instances where we have either infinitely many solutions or no solutions. So um, this first one here has y equals to 3x minus 5 and 6x minus 2y equals to 10. Um, so maybe we'll try to solve. Uh, maybe we'll try to solve by this same method of addition. So if we rewrite this first guy as what minus three x plus y equals to minus five, and six x minus two y equals to ten. Notice that if we multiply the first equation by minus two, we get the second equation back. So these are, in fact, the same line. OK. Um, actually, if we were trying to solve this one by addition, what we would probably do is multiply the first equation by just 2, right? And then what we would get is um, minus 6x plus 2y equals to minus 10 which is the exact opposite of the other equation. So that when we add the two together, we'd get zero equals to zero. That's definitely true, right? Likewise, if we try to use substitution here, since we have y equals to 3x minus 5, uh, we can substitute that into the second equation and get 6x minus 2 times 3x minus 5 equals to 10. That gives us 6x minus 6x plus 10 equals to 10. The 6x and minus 6x cancel, and that gives us another equation that is certainly true, 10 equals to 10. So we, we're at kind of a loss here, though. Like, we don't have just x equals something or y equals something. And as we noticed at first, it's because really these two equations are really the same equation. Uh, one is just the other one multiplied by minus 2. The second one is the first one multiplied by minus 2. So, um, so really, we can say, OK, well, it's really just this line, y equals to 3x minus 5, written two different funny ways. So really, the set of all solutions is a set of all pairs x comma 3x minus 5. That's all we need. And x is allowed to be any real number. 
So here we have an infinite number of solutions. Okay, this next example here is 8x minus 4y equals to 7 and minus 2x plus y equals to 9. It looks like we'll be able to cancel out the x stuff if we multiply the second equation by 4. So let's do that. The first equation remains the same, and the second equation becomes now minus 8x plus 4y equals to 36. Okay, but now when we add these two together, oh, we get zero on the right side, or sorry, on the left side, and 43 on the right side. So we get zero equals to 43. But that is nonsense. We know better than that. That is never true. So this system of equations has no solution. It represents one of those uh, pairs of lines that are parallel lines with different y-intercepts, so they never intersect. Um, and so that's pretty much set out right here. Okay, and as a sort of, I think this is our last example for today, right? So we'll do an application. So we have a boat that is traveling upstream against the current. And it takes two hours for this boat to go a whole 36 miles. And then on the return trip downstream, when the current is working in our favor, it only takes one and a half hours to go this whole 36 miles. So they ask us to then to use the, some linear equations to find the speed of the boat in still water when there's no current and the speed of the current. So um, notice that speed is really distance divided by time. So we can get distance by multiplying speed times time. And so what we'd like to solve for is x, the speed of the boat, and y, the speed of the current. That's two different independent entities, right? So, um, so when we're going upstream, what's the speed? Well, we have the speed of the boat that we're going forwards with, and then the speed of the current is working against us, so our total speed will be x minus y. When we're going downstream and the current's working in our favor, our total speed will be the base speed of the boat plus now the speed of the current. And so then our system of equations that's come to us from this, um, this general idea of time times speed equals distance says that when we're going upstream, it takes two hours time times speed of x minus y to travel a distance of 36 miles. And when we are going downstream with the current in our favor, it takes 1.5 hours at a speed of now x plus y to go that same distance of 36 miles. So then the first equation, we can really just divide by two right off and we get x minus y equals to 18, which we can then solve as x equals to y plus 18. Ah, now I can substitute that one into the second equation and get that, that equation becomes 1.5 times now y plus 18 plus y, putting x equals y plus 18 into there. And that will equal then 36. So this becomes 1.5 times 2y plus 18 equals to 36. Now I can divide both sides by 1.5 and I get 2y plus 18 equals to 24, so subtracting 18 from both sides gives me 2y equals to 6, and thus y equals to 3. Three what's? Well, let's see. We are talking about miles versus hours. So we've got three miles per hour is the speed of the current, OK? And then the speed of the boat, x, we know is y plus 18. So x equals to 21 miles per hour. All right, so uh, join us next time where we're talking about this same concept of systems of equations, except instead of having two equations and two variables, we will have three equations and three variables. Uh, see you then.